everyone. Welcome. This is uh, Richard Chapman, Cybersecurity Program Director and SOC Manager for CyberNow Labs. And today I'm bringing to you our August uh, breach of the month. And, you know, honestly, maybe we should call this the breaches of the month um, <laughs> episode because we've, we've had a lot of breaches uh, in the last uh, week or so that have really uh, been kind of stealing the headlines. Uh, Toyota and Canon, microchip technology, the Oregon Zoo, Auto Canada. But today we're going to focus on one that I think is a little more noteworthy, probably a, a little bit larger issue, uh, not just for the cybersecurity community, of course, but for the entire United States, as well as probably maybe even some additional people as well, too. Um, that said, we're going to focus today on the National Public Database. Um, this is definitely one that we have to focus on. Why? Um, this is a breach that has over 2.7 billion accounts uh, breached. That sounds like a lot. Well, it is. There's only 333 million people in the United States. Now, I'm assuming there's probably some uh, there's there's probably some individuals that have multiple uh, either accounts or components here uh, where they're showing up multiple times. But that said, 333 million people versus 2.7 billion uh, different pieces of information. That's that's a that's a lot. Um, and it's not just the fact that it's a lot. It's also what exactly uh, was was breached, what data was breached. So even though it's likely that there are multiple records for each and every individual, uh, that's not really our major focus at the moment. Our major focus here is on the information that was suspected of being breached. Uh, that information contains names, email addresses, phone numbers, social security numbers, as well as mailing addresses. Guys, this is the, the, the meat and potatoes of information stealing. Uh, there, there's going to be a very large fallout from this information breach. And uh, unfortunately, we have to be aware of it. But uh, what is the NPD? Because I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of people don't know what the National Public Database is. It is literally a data broker. And that data broker is responsible for collecting data. They, they, they do a lot with background checks. It's a, a single source verification location for being able to check information, public data, uh, including criminal records, addresses, employment history. Um, and basically they offer that information for sale. So this is a really, really large clearinghouse of information uh, that was breached. And you know, there's, there's a lot of different um, cybersecurity organizations that are writing articles on this right now. Uh, there's a few that I've used as some of my sources. Time actually had a really nice write-up on it, which included a tool that I'm going to share with you here in just a minute as well, too. Um, Krebs on security, always a good uh, vendor uh, for, for uh, information, and, and they've got a great article. And I'll share these links with you guys so you have them as well, too. But um, to quote Krebs's article, I thought this was actually very interesting and telling. Uh, Krebs Security said that they learned that Another, another uh, national public database data broker, which shares access to the same consumer records, inadvertently published the passwords to its backend database in a file that was freely available from its homepage. Uh, that is a huge mistake, obviously, that allowed threat actors to be able to gain uh, access, uh, apparently. Uh, the timeline that we're seeing here right now in April, there was a cyber criminal uh, known by USDOD. Uh, they evidently began selling some of the stolen data from the National Public Database. And then in July, they leaked what was stolen. So this really put a spotlight on the details of the data that actually became available as a result of this breach. And then August 1st is really when we started finding out about it. Why is that? Well, because of course, uh, class action lawsuits have been filed. As a matter of fact, uh, I think there's seven or eight, uh, I might be wrong there, uh, class action lawsuits that have already been filed. So unfortunately, uh, there's going to be, again, that fallout from this. But I do want to share some information with you guys. Uh, first and foremost, there is a tool, uh, pentester.com actually created a tool where you can go and input some information into the, the website. It's a query tool. And basically what it does is it queries the database. Now, you don't have to put any critical information in there. Just to clarify, you, you put your name, the state, 
And I'll, I'll be honest, I checked multiple states where I have resided. Um, and of course, you put in your year of birth, but you are not inputting your social, you're not inputting your full year of birth, you're not putting your full address. Basically, it's querying the database uh, based on your name, your address, or I'm sorry, your name, the state, and the year of birth. And then you go through the list and you look and see if your name is in that list. And yeah, you're going to have to look at the addresses. And of course, they have the social securities blocked out except for the last two digits. So it should make it a little bit easier to identify uh, your name in that list. I can tell you, I've checked multiple people in my family and there's definitely some, some, uh, some, some information there that is, is going to need to be monitored. So the next question you know, that you're probably gonna say is, or ask is what do I do next? Like, what do I do to protect myself? Well, first and foremost, I would highly recommend that you monitor your credit history. Um, any changes, any new accounts, I would be looking at that and paying attention uh, to see if anything gets opened in your name. Um, you can call each credit bureau, uh, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Have them put a, I forget what they call, I don't believe it's a hold or a block, but they basically make it so that you can't open a new account without verifying with you first that it's actually you. It's kind of like a multi-factor authentication here or you know, a, a, an extra double check to ensure that somebody's not being able to open an account in your name. I would definitely take those steps. And I would also watch out for uh, uh, smishing attacks and phishing attacks. You might receive some text messages or some emails that maybe come from vendors that you do business with and they might attempt to gain your password. So they might try to fish you for that information. If you get any text messages or emails from anybody that you do business with, banks or different online organizations, no matter what it is, always reach out to the organization directly as opposed to accessing the information uh, through the link that they send you, whether it's in that email or in that text message. Uh, I'm always leery of those and I always reach out to the vendor directly. For example, if I got a text message from my bank that says, hey, we need to verify that, that this is you that's doing this activity, please input your password to verify yes. You know, something simple like that, it sounds goofy, sounds like something people wouldn't fall for, but they do, they fall for it all the time. So make sure you're protecting yourself and keeping yourself aware. Some of these activities are things that you should do in any case. Um, if you're not looking to open any new accounts, I would always institute uh, that hold on your credit so that people can't just inadvertently open up or uh, open up an account without you knowing. Uh, I think that's just generally good practice and always be leery of phishing emails or emails or text messages that come from your banking institutions or schools or uh, any type of online organization that you do business with. Uh, go to them directly. Go directly to their site by typing in the address. Um, don't click on the links in the emails or in the text messages. Go directly to them and interact with them. Call them on the phone and verify, is this you? Did you guys send this out? Is there a problem? Uh, and clarify that. Um, you know, these, these types of breaches, unfortunately, are happening more and more frequently. And that's one of the reasons why I love what I do at CyberNow Labs, helping train and develop people to become cybersecurity analysts. Um, if you're interested in getting into cybersecurity, I would definitely check, you know, check us out for sure. But uh, guys, that's, that's all I have for today. Keep an eye out for these breaches. Be aware. Read cybersecurity news, even if you're not in the industry. Um, it's good to stay up to date on this stuff and find out and understand exactly what these attackers are doing, whether it's to companies you do business with or you directly. Thank you all for uh, seeing me today. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode. If you like Two Bold Nerds, check out our entire playlist right here. It's a lot of fun. We'll see you there.